think um, probably should do this more often is we'll go around and uh, introduce who's here and that's like a good attendance. We we'll start down on here and sharing a mic. John Darrow. Daniel Need. Sophia Rossanetti. Ken Ellsworth. But Dylan Pelton. Julia Berling. Pat McGinnis. All right, thank you. Um, first order of business is uh, we have minutes from January 10th. I have a motion to approve. Motion to approve and presented. Second. All right, all in favor? And then uh, minutes from February 7th. A motion to approve. Second by John, all in favor? Thank you. All right. Uh, first on the agenda is uh, 15 Holly Street. If I understand it correctly, there's been no new information submitted. This was a previous application. Okay. We did. We did meet with him after the last session and went through his options, and he was going to select some and send to us, and he did not. Okay. So. All right. So maybe pretty straightforward. I think we need a motion to deny the application. Motion to deny, and with the addendum, which kind of monitored, I noticed today on the way over, the sign is still there. If suddenly some signage appears, you need to. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Thank you. Pass. Um, 44 Court Street. This was also a previous application. Go ahead, Dylan. So this is the previous building and this is the previous sign. He resubmitted these changes that we told him to make. It's a little smaller on the side and on the edge. I think that's to fit in with the tablature on the building. Okay, so he he was following what we suggested. Yeah, he was. And John, did you have some comments regarding how it was framed or? I, I did, and I just want to make sure that he conforms with what we had uh, suggested. So the mock-up that we have here mostly conforms with what the board had had told him to do it was supposed to be confined within the dimensions of the pre-existing millwork and we're going to allow him to remove two of the frames and encapsulate his sign within one larger frame to conform to the millwork on each side so it, it needs to shrink it needs to be bordered in matching millwork okay well, that was, if, if you look at the application this side went from 24 inches to 20 inches, and I think it was a conform to the tablet. Okay, so just the mock up didn't show. I know, I mean, yeah, yeah. that perfect. So he needs to do the framing around it, similar to the framing that's correct, in the other and in, in the same linear fashion as is, is what's on either side. Okay. You can't pop up for that. That was the intent of the board, and okay. that was fully explained to him. We right. understand. Then, if okay. he understands, I make a motion to approve as presented. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Thank you. Motion passed. Hi. Uh, 49 Court Street. This is for the current sign that's on 49 Court Street, the Metro Center building right here. It's looking for approval because they put it up without approval. And the applicant is here. Just oh, here. I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were the applicant. Could you come down and uh, have a seat there and uh, just tell us your name, and we'll uh, we'll try to work with you on getting this res resolved.
Is your mic on, by the way? You got a green light on that? Okay, green now. Push it. Green. There okay. we go. So we're, we are recording, so I'm sorry. I didn't realize it was now. Would you start again, please? Sure. Uh, my name is Jeff. I'm from Pack Signs. Uh, we're a manufacturer out of uh, Queens in New York. And uh, I'm here uh, representing uh, the, Sp the Spine Center today. The, uh, the doctor wanted to come, but he has patients. So he asked me to come and uh, explain what he, he was trying to accomplish. Um, last uh, summer, uh, the doctor had contact notes. And uh, at that time, what he asked us to do was he said that he had some windows that had exposure to, uh, to Court Street here in Binghamton, but it also had exposure to the inside of his actual practice. He wanted something that would be able to um, promote health and wellness by having light and sunlight and actually patients to be able to actually see outside, similar to like the, the buses here in Broome County where you have the buses, you can't see in. And that was the point. So that people on the, uh, the sidewalk would, would not be able to actually see patients, literally, because right behind those windows are actually offices, you know, where patients are actually in. And so he wanted to be able to have that ability. You know, he could have done it with, with just blinds and that's what he did, but then you, you can't see outside and you can't get the light inside, just, just like you have the light here. And so that's what he wanted me, to, our, our company to put together something that would be, you know, interesting, attractive, and, and it, quite honestly, uh, you know, I, I guess it's my fault. Uh, we really didn't um, didn't consider the uh, the implications of sign permit because we had done so many similar things in in uh, in the in the city, which is very similar to that, where they cover up the windows so that people cannot see from outside to see inside, but they can see from inside and they can see outside. So, so that's what we did. And then, of course, now we have a problem. The, um, he had also asked me to, and, and again, it's, it's, it's somewhat irrelevant, but, but it's still a fact that there are numerous other things just basically like it, you know, left, right, and all the way around the corner um, uh, that uh, I can pass out. They're not all windows, some are windows, some are other things, some are full graphics, some are Things are not full graphics, but they might might as well have been because you, you can't see in. Okay, it's got everything's covered. I mean, I can pass these around if you'd like, but these are the things that are, are right here. So yeah, no, and I think that would be helpful. Uh, we'll just pass them around. Okay, send them on one side or the other, and sure. Yeah, I think, again, I think the doctor's application is different. You know, quite honestly, I mean, you know, the liquor store which has all the things all over. I mean, you can't see inside. You know the place across the street which is says logos and all that other stuff it's you know i guess you could there's a little spots you can see but the application is different i mean quite honestly he's, he's actually trying he actually has a real reason to do it and uh, at the same time it, it's uh, something that, that is is interesting and vibrant and, and we, we right. at least we think he thinks his patients think is something that, uh, that yeah. uh, you know, provided. Well, well, certainly I think it's a different uh, situation than we've had before. Most of the stuff that we see are for advertising purposes. It's not a dual role. Obviously this is a dual role from what I'm understanding from but, you, so. Yeah, totally, in, in yeah. this case. I mean, that, that was what he actually started with because again, this is the actual material, mm -hmm. okay? I mean, this is, this is what happens on the inside and, and you'll see one of the pictures I passed around actually had a picture one of one of the offices. You know, you can that I showed you. This is what you see inside, and then this is sort of what you see. Well, that's what you see ultimately outside. Right. That's the actual material. Right. You know, the very thin perforated so, film. That's what. Right. It is. So why uh, the board members are looking at these things? Um, there's two things that we're we're well, one thing we're mainly charged to do, right? And that that's to uphold the historic uh, guidelines that the city council has passed. So we have a 
we have this book that we try to follow and, and go through that. And there's exceptions and we try to work through that. So we're, we're going to try to work through this with you as well. The other thing is you have to uh, abide by the city sign ordinance, which is a certain amount of signage per lineal foot of frontage of the of the building. I don't know if that's come up yet or if the building department has looked at that, but it seems like an awful lot of signage for a short amount of lineal footage. So you may have two things that, that it, we're fighting against. One is the sign, you know, meeting the side uh, ordinances of the city, and then two, meeting the historic preservation that, that we've established in the city. So those are the two things. And I don't know about the second one, about the Amount of, amount of signage that you're allowed. Technically, the total signage area, the total sign area of a business unit should be limited to two square feet of sign per one linear foot of business facade. Okay. And it is so so being... even if we even if we all loved what this was, right? At this point, I still think you have a, a problem with a sign ordinance in the city based on the allowable square footage of signage right and i don't know what that is that somebody have to do the math right we understand the if, if i understand it correctly um and i think the doctor uh would would want to to uh to do this is again he has a reason and we think it's a good a, a fair reason um and that uh, we would only want probably because you know to cod to at least support the project and that he would go through, you know, with a, a variance process, I think is probably the, uh, the, the best method. Oh, well, that's a good, that, that's a question. Um, you know, it depends on, on, on actually where it goes, you know, in this particular one, I, I would guess probably gets a great deal of sunlight, probably physically, Three years, if if he's lucky, <laughs> yeah, it, it 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 definitely has a life on, on that particular product. Yeah. So what happens to it after the lifespan? You see both ways, or it has to be reapplied, or or just it, it, gets worn it out. Ultimately, it'll either deteriorate, like where all the little holes are, and it'll start looking ragged, and he's not going to want that. Right. Or or eventually, if somehow it could stay on there but it won't it would literally eventually become all white okay 15 years from now it'd be totally it would be totally uh you know it would turn all white on both sides but that we would never he would never do that and that gets applied on the inside or outside on the outside outside yeah it has okay. to be on the outside physically i was just going to ask you it has to be the outside. it has to be on the outside it can't be physically on the inside because the way the adhesive on, on the product itself it, it won't work the other way okay To your uh, second uh, point there about the square footage, can the material be neutral? In other words, can a, a certain portion of it have your design or aesthetic on it and the rest of it be neutral? So, it would, you know, wouldn't it otherwise be noticeable? Other than well, let, let me get the answer is yes and no, but it won't accomplish his mission. There's actually a picture in there. I don't know if you might have seen it. I tell you the truth, I, I, if you pass it to me, I could find it. But there's one that it's uh, on Snangle Street. And I think it's the, there's a cafe there. No, it's a cafe. Uh, and, and what you'll see, one of those pictures, okay? And one of those pictures is sort of answers your question. It becomes actually a, kind of a, a light gray, but you can actually see through. No matter how you do it, you're, you're gonna actually see through. So yeah, I mean, you, could, you could do it, but it, it won't solve the problem. You're still gonna see people's legs and, Heads and and you know uh, you know it, it wouldn't it won't it won't serve the purpose of, of of the application again his goal was so that again you, it could be you know sunlight you know you could see through it you know from the inside and you could do that you can you can when you're inside it it doesn't look exactly like you're outside but pretty good pretty close it works but. Outside, it obviously it, it has a different app. It has a different feel. Even if you stand right next to the window, you can't actually see through it. You're famous. Yeah, that's that's the one there. <laughs> 
I mean, technically that, that is a hundred percent application on the window. Uh, it's with part of it you kind of see through and part of it you don't. But. So when I look at some of these, you guys have, you haven't seen it over there, but um, I don't know which ones are in the historic district and which ones are out of the historic district. That's a factor. So we have an historic district and we have outside of that. So outside of it, we have no purview. So inside, what has been the policy that we've tried to follow with the guidelines is we understand that graphic window signage is 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 appropriate. It's what's it's what's coming. It's what's here, right? It makes sense, but we haven't allowed it to be a full window graphics. We've allowed words. Uh, we've allowed a, a background is, is uh, of a non-color, uh, but we haven't had a full full display. Now you bring us present uh, pictures or photographs of those things that are on there, some of which may be in violation that we didn't have a chance to approve or disapprove. Uh, so, but I appreciate you bringing those because there's some that are full graphics and we'd have to see if they're in the historic district. The one with the, I know the, the food shop has got a completely covered window. That, Again, and then it becomes even a, a, we, we were only showing that and showing you that there is some variation here already. Yes. But the truth of the matter is his his purpose is entire almost entirely different. I mean, not mm -hmm. totally, but it, it ha actually has a reason behind it. Yeah. Um, can I add something? Sure. If um, a structure is contiguous to a historic district, the historic district guidelines apply. So this is basically district you just can't apply for historic tax credits I'm trying to expand our historic districts but you, you do have to comply with the historic design guidelines and i'm looking we will look into the growth but, um and we this is still going to the zoning officer for review for the percentage covering so if you have recommendations to for this to fit better in the district we can talk about those and make sure that he gets that as well. Mm -hmm. But and any type of waiver would have to go through the zoning board of appeals for the sign coverage. Right. We under, I, right. I think the doctor stands that. Okay. I think again, what what he asked me to do today again was to make sure that what what he was trying to do, mm -hmm. and that he was was hoping for just um, a. A rec possibly a recommendation for approval through a variance process. I think he, he fully understands that a variance would be required. Yeah. You know, and again, it's my fault to begin with because honestly, I didn't really think about it, and because of what it is. So you know, I'll accept the uh, responsibility for not actually, even though I don't, I'm not here. But I, I still should have thought of that. You know, a little closer. But at the same time, he was asking for it. It made sense of something we had done numerous times in other in other localities. Just to be clear, so for it to have the, the sun blocking properties, it would have to have a design on the exterior of some sort. Yeah, I kind of. Would just a solid color work if it were black or blue? Or... Yeah, yeah, I guess that would work. I'm just thinking out loud to, to get you to your I, square I, footage requirement. I, I guess so. Yeah. Um... Do we have an application for the actual sign as it exists? I mean, is is there an application for it on file with the city somewhere, or, or the sign just went up? No, it, it, oh, I'm sorry. To, uh, again, we actually didn't think, or I didn't think, in this particular case, or just didn't think about it. To be honest, I guess. So I'm guilty as guilty as charged, and, and, and the the property owner, we showed them, and, and the doctor, everybody was like, "Well, yeah, that that really makes a whole lot of sense." Okay. So, so his his we're, ultimate, we're guilty. Let us ponder the penalty. Okay. <laughs> so the, the ultimate objective here, as I perceive it, <clears throat> is the doctor's looking to protect his client's privileged medical information from general view, and he's trying to do it in aesthetically pleasing fashion, which he has achieved with this. We have no application before the city, to my knowledge. 
PAC has a presence in the city. You've done a lot of work up here. I know that. You know better. Oh, sure. Oh, sure. But, but, okay. But, but, now, stop right there. Now, what? I'm on a roll here. Oh, okay. I'm having fun. <laughs> the, the hangman's standing there waiting for you. You already pled guilty. <laughs> and uh, we do have guidelines. We've had this in past. We're, we're, it has is, is appeared, and we, we simply cannot allow it exiting if you're able to get a variation, which would have to come back before us once you achieve it. Okay. Um, in, in the meantime, we don't have a, a means of approving what's presented according to the guidelines and laws that this commission operates under. And I don't mean to be the, the bearer of the black message. You know, um, I think it's a nice sign. He may have to go for, for an optive window treatment, be it drapes or blinds again with a conforming sign in the windows to get through the historic guidelines. That's just there. We, we do have to operate under, under the auspices of, of what we have. Um, if he might have been around the corner two blocks away, he'd never even be seeing us and it'd be our loss because we wouldn't have the pleasure of meeting him. Um, that's my two cents here. Um, I don't know, we could possibly table it pending a review or something, but right now we, we don't have the wiggle room to, to accept it. I think, um, were you looking for or even a recommendation or some thoughts as to what we could get to? Um, we have a book of the guidelines upstairs that we can just give you. The, all the sign requirements are spelled out in the charter for the city. I put a few pertinent ones up here, but there are other ones that you'd have to. And remember that the sign that you're proposing, if there's no lettering on it, if it's not really a sign, it's window treatment to opaque the view from the inside out. You can still have just a flat color without it really being a sign would be an application. So so that's, you know, to achieve the what the doctor is looking for so people can see out or get light in and people can't see in. You can take that same material as as was mentioned and make it be a, a color without anything on it. Uh, and it's not a sign. And and we've allowed that situation to happen before as well. And your signage could conform to the measurements as outlined by the city set on that black backdrop. I know that sounds silly. We didn't write the guidelines. We're we're just the administrators of of the policy. Again, though, uh, could, could they could the doctor not go for a variant? I don't have the authority to say that. I'm just no, I understand, but the, the doctor could file for a variant. I, I believe, right? You yeah. got to bounce that off the important people at this table. Yes, you could uh, take this case as zoning board of appeals, but um, it would help if COD either denied based on um, the conditions presented or conditionally approved it based on conditions presented as well. And then you would take it to zoning, but then the- uh, Right, right. That's right, the right. zoning officer I, then would right. review your I think your that's what the doctor would, permit. Would, would wish that would happen, mm -hmm. would be that COD would either have a neutral position or, you know, this is a different position and that uh, we would recommend approval. And then the variants would make their own decision beyond that versus, no, I, can't have it. I, I think he I think he needs some kind of a decision from here to go to a variance proceeding, right? Yeah. So in, in general, as I'm just talking through it, um, we're okay with the material being on the window, providing it's not all littered littered up. I'll say it's offensive, not all signage. Well, the signage would have to conform for signage us for us to it. conditionally approve it, in my opinion. And that's all. This right. this is an opinion. This isn't that it would have to conform with the city guidelines for signage at this time. Correct. Although he could opaque the rest of the window. Correct. Um, now, what is all the other? Would, I don't have a clear look at it. What what's all the uh, words that are underneath? You know, like say the the farthest panel to the left, because that's the other thing we. You know, we recognize that you got to advertise for the business, and you got to indicate what's what's there. Have, but it's a, a bigger picture. Like, okay, that would help. It looks like there are services that are offered there. Right. So, oh, I'm sorry. We got. Thank you. 
And again, this is, I think, it's got to be the first medical practice advertising we dealt with when it comes to the food establishments. That's we try not to have everything that's on the menu on the front sign. In the historic district, they advertised their business and they identified what they did. And that okay. was that's what we're trying to follow. Southern tier spine and disc with the doctor's name to me is the sign. The rest of it's advertising, other than the contact information, the phone number. Um, one of the other things that's just flowing through the back of my mind here, God, I hate being the villain, is that uh, without a mock-up of the proposed sign to amend it, I'm uncomfortable um, going forward. I mean, if we're going to conform to the city and this is it with the matted black background, are we going to approve all this? Or are we going to streamline it here? Um, and, you know, we had the the mobile phone place, Cricket Wireless or whatever. We had to have those all pulled off before and they went around the corner of the Perry building. We did a couple others. I know there's a couple that are out there right now that if we could get code enforcement to enforce, they wouldn't be. Well, there could be a few in the photo that he provided. Yeah, I saw that. So, so you think you're headed towards a uh, more or less a denial so they can go to a variance as opposed to a denial with conditions? Well, okay. so as I understand it, if we, we put conditions, we're putting conditions on the sign that is there. How do we, how do we make conditions in a speculative nature as we do not have a reformatted uh, sign for say a, a third of the window or whatever the the guidelines are half the window that we're supposed to approve. I don't like approving things I can't see. Um, no, I understand. I'm just very uncomfortable with that. You can speak. With it. It, okay. And uh, I I you know I looked at the southern tier spine and disc and to me that's the sign. Everything else is is kind of superfluous. If we were going to make a proposal or a motion for possibly approving it going forward, I, I would want to identify the sign for the, the amended acceptance with, with suggestions or, or whatever going forward. I'm yeah, kind of tagging off that, you know, I think I could see us doing some sort of conditional approval or something if we know like what pieces of the sign are going to be on whatever is going to be approved. Like, is it going to just be the Southern tier and the contact information? Or are there additional pieces that the applicant would want on? You know, if we had an idea of what those elements are that they wanted to keep for the new sign, I think that makes conditional approval a little easier because we, at least we can see what pieces are going to be there or we will takes place we have the option of maybe tabling it to be represented as to what the the proposed signage would be if, if we if we table this can he uh, legally go for a variance because he wasn't denied by the board you got to make an action in order for him to go for a variance okay. that, that, that's that's where the thing is. now the other thing i was wondering i mean if anything comes off a panel, it all comes off, right? I, yeah. So it's not a, not a pick and choose. The panel disappears. If, if he doesn't get his variance and not to hold anybody to, so what do you, what's the city typically do? 50% over allowable or 10% over allowable, 20% over allowable? This seems like it's a lot over allowable. It would be considered I twice. I think you're going to lose your variance, and I'm, I'm not speaking with any knowledge of that but there's a percentage that they're going to allow you to have and if this is over significantly over you're going to lose that variance request too so these panels are coming off one way or the other if he meets the terms of the cod signage you he would not need a variant because it would reduce the the amount of the um sign by 50 percent at least not more mm -hmm. so if, if he compresses that into what our guidelines require, it won't be legible. Okay. 
my my gut instinct and again it's an opinion and and we we are despite what's going on we're very pro business for downtown we really want to help you're just in a niche where it's it's a restrictive niche um i'm more inclined to to deny it at this point and have you come back with a new one to get approval and then at that point you could ask for a variance one way or the other I, I don't see a means well, where we actually it makes, it makes some sense and I I you know we don't like to generally deny anything right off the bat but in this case if we do deny you you can go for your variance you're going to get an answer from them that they're going to say okay yeah we we like all of it we don't like we only like 50 percent of it you're going to end up redoing the sign anyway and you got to bring it back to show us the sample of what the sign is and then you'll follow your variance and then that'll give us some guidelines to work with. Yeah, no, that thing. Well, I mean, we're not going to go against the variance. I guess if you come back here meeting the variance, we're not going to say, oh, no, we still don't like it, right? That would be, I would be supportive of that. Right, because the city offered the variance. But right now we don't know what they're going to offer you as far as how many words you get to have in that space, that window space. That makes sense? Good to me. That's scary. It does, right? Yeah. So not what you wanted, I know. I don't think it's in the best interest, but I'm not that's not for me to uh to say. Yeah. Uh, it, I think it's if we take a look at every one of the pictures I showed you, and if we took a vote from people walking outside, I think they probably would disagree. Yeah. I think it's actually a benefit to the city, but I get the I get it. Oh, but and, I mean, right? You know, this is Binghamton. No, yes, I it. understand. I understand. For um, um, for patient privacy, you can have internal screening in a window. He can have he can have a blind. Exactly. It, it, right, but then you can't see outside. You can't. You know, that's that was sort of the, his point. Was he felt that it would be for health and wellness, and uh, it's it's a whole different thing than the liquor store down the street. Yeah, we, we can't control anything on the inside. So if there was some thing that stopped viewing from, you know, the put on the inside, stopped viewing from the outside, and you could still see outside, we can't we can't say anything about that. It's all it's unless all it's attached to the window. Unless it's attached to the window. So freestanding window treatment, different than attached window treatment. I like your sign. I do like the sign. I just got guidelines. Any other comments? My last comment is if the application were made before the city, you would have had the guidelines which you needed to conform to, which apparently did not happen. I would make a motion to deny the sign application as presented at this time, encouraging you to come back with a remodified sign. I will second. All in favor? Not yet. Okay. Okay. See you. Thank you. Motion passed. You want this back? I'm troubled by all the other photographs that we've had out there. Mm -hmm. The food one, the food one was huge. I mean, that is it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think I think Oakdale Pizza came in here for sign permits, and that's that wasn't one of them. 
Did it? That's the one they got approved. Mm -hmm. I again, I feel bad when someone spends the money to do that stuff, gets it up, and then. Oh, it's a traveling. Uh, next on the agenda, 52 Clinton Street. Do we, is, is anyone representing or calling? Nobody's in? here to represent, no. Okay, is it? Okay. So, this is an accessory building for demolition. All right. 52. One of the things, and again, I need board's thought on this. We usually have somebody that has to represent the application or at least call in. Um, and, and we typically don't hear it. I hate to do that in this case, but that's generally what we've done before. So I don't, I don't know if you knew that, but we, uh, we, it's pretty cut and dry. That's why I hate to procedurally. But I would say in light of how straightforward this one is, I, I would not want to necessarily table it. Well, that's why we did it. We, we, we got a rash of people not showing up, presenting the applications that didn't, couldn't even ask any questions. That's what, that's what started the process. Yeah. Right. What's that? Yeah. I mean, it's a super old building. I thought it's pretty neat that it stood up that long. There doesn't yeah. seem to be much left of it. Neglect but... seems to be its biggest problem. Or, or lack thereof. Three days to nine days and one. Looks like it might have been a little. When they take time. these down, do they do asbestos surveys or they? Okay. Yeah. I mean, some of them are probably can be structurally unstable, so you couldn't even do an abatement job if you found it. Uh, so controlled demolition. Yeah. Yeah, so probably it's going to be a controlled demolition with the asbestos in place. Well, that's true, right? Exactly. It wasn't even invented yet. Depends on what they added, I guess. Do we know if they're just going to use it for green space or what they're going to use that space for after they demolish it? A good question. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to uh, state that it'd be nice to get the uh, white piece of property out of the uh, back of the Foot Street Cafe there. Uh, you know, beyond its uh, life expectancy, um, it's in pretty rough shape. Uh, unrepairable, and we're looking to basically just get some uh, more parking spots in there, vehicles off the street, and uh, you know, give them a little bit more room. Is there a, Dan, was there a site plan done or some kind of a sketch to show the 
parking area? Is it contiguous to another parking area? I'm having a hard time understanding you guys. Is it contiguous? Is it contiguous to another parking area? Is there like a site plan? Yes. Yeah. It's basically, the uh, the existing parking lot ends right there at that house, and it drops right off. Um. So essentially, once we get done doubling that building, we're going to be hauling in fill to level it all off nicely. So then that way, it's one continuous parking lot right to the property line. Right behind the Clinton Street Cafe, right? Yes, sir. Yep. So, is that a you need a site plan uh, approval? Okay. So, isn't that line of question? You guys know, generally can't tear something down to create a parking lot, but in this case, it's an expansion of a parking lot. It's a little bit less egregious. So, uh, that part of it makes sense to me. And he's got to do a site plan anyway to get planning board approval. Okay. Do want to make sure he knows he had to be on the phone for us to be able to tear his building down. Before we tear a building down, we need somebody present to be represented. Okay. Yeah. And okay. and you got to hang on the phone through this. Just, just hang out. We'll, we'll get through it. Okay. 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 I would have known. I would have came there for the meeting. I'm sorry. And I'm I'm okay. to make a motion. All right. All right. Well, I got to start the secret process. Okay. okay. So I need a motion to declare Cod as lead agency. Motion to declare Cod as lead agency. Second. Second. All in favor? Uh, motion to declare this as an unlisted action. Motion to declare it as an unlisted action. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Okay. So who's going to read today? Since I have my part. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Will the proposed action create a material conflict with an adopted land use plan or zoning regulation? No. Will the proposed action result in a change in the use of intensity or use of land? No. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of the existing community? No. Will the proposed action impact on the environmental characteristics that caused the establishment of a critical environmental area? No. Will the Proposed action result in an adverse change in the existing level of traffic or affect existing infrastructure for mass transit, biking, or walkway? No. Will the proposed action increase the use of energy and it fails to incorporate reasonably available energy conservation or renewable energy opportunities? No. Will the proposed action impact existing public-private water supplies, public-private wastewater treatment utilities? No. Will the proposed action impair the character or quality of important historic, archaeological, architectural, or aesthetic resources? No. Will the proposed action result in an adverse change to natural resources, i.e., for example, wetlands, water bodies, groundwater, air quality, flora, or fauna? No. Will the proposed action result in an increase in the potential for erosion, flooding, or drainage problems? No. Will the proposed action create a hazard to environmental resources or human health? No. Um, so therefore, I declare a negative declaration. Okay, we need a roll call for this. So Dan, Dan made the motion. Go ahead. Bob Peary, aye. David Whalen, aye. Ken Ellsworth, aye. Motion passed. All right, John. Thank you, ask. <clears throat> Give me a minute here. I gotta. No, you should no. have these lines memorized. <laughs> Depending oh, on, don't no matter what character what character you're in, <laughs> the lines are the same. They are something about the <laughs> guidelines as laid down by the state historic organization. I know. Blah blah blah. I'm teasing. Um, if the structure is an outstanding example of a structure or memorial representative of its era, either past or present, or if the structure is one of the few remaining examples of a past architectural style or combination of styles, or if the structure is associated with a historical person or event of significance to the city, re region, state, or nation, finding none, I make a negative declaration. Tear it down. Okay. Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. You Thanks. got it.
down the time to have it. Does staff have any other business items that we need to discuss? I have an update on the uh, historic district design guideline modification. Just to, sorry, historic design guideline modification um, regarding the backlit signage. It did go through um, city council business meeting. Um, they reviewed, asked a few questions, and it is scheduled for the 15th for a vote. So um, I emailed Mark Gennady, whose case is pending this, um, and let him know that if they approve it, we'll have them come back April 7th. If they disapprove it, then the application will be denied. So that's where we stand with that. So, okay, thank yeah. you. Anything else? Board members, anything? Get a, a application in front of the city and what to do and what not to do. And that was just shenanigans. And he took a lot of money away from that doctor, hoping everything would go away. You know, that's wrong, bad person. I would like to pursue the other violations in some way, I guess. Because it's kind of hard to to pay it, pass that kind of judgment. Yeah. Muckles, I think, was the biggest um, violation picture I saw. I think I'm saying that right. Well again, you know, we're we're here making a you know a judgment on on this guy and, and he he brought up examples where we need to there. We we had a code enforcement officer 15 years ago. On the with the board, and we were starting to do some stuff, and then it's heads roll and change. We lost them. We haven't gotten one back, and we we need one, or we need to have access to the office to get somebody out there if we like go around and start writing up. And these guys are stretched thin right now because all the evictions and stuff going on. But we still need somebody. Yeah, a number of those photos that he showed were in compliance. They it was either. It's based on the square footage of the area. Um, some of them was, one of them was a painted wall sign, was in a window, you know, so a lot of what he showed us were not representative of his point. Oh, I went through and streamlined it. Most of them, I went through and streamlined a lot of it when they yeah. first came here because, you know, he had the, the building signs from the forum. Right. You know, excuse me, this doesn't belong. Right. Me. Just a bunch of other stuff. Right, that was a box yeah. sign. 48. Yeah signs behind yeah. the window in the bodega yeah. we have no say over what's behind the window so yeah. he's going to call the office and we'll good luck right okay anything else from board members all right uh motion to adjourn motion to adjourn let's go home second all in favor hi thank you next meeting seven of april <laughs>